It'll be standing room only yep. tonight. Big crowd for the big game between the Red Wings and the Avalanche. Let's look at tonight's Florida starting lineup. Peter will start with the goaltending. And a couple of goaltenders who have yet to lose this season. Jonas Gustafson, two great starts for the Detroit Red Wings. He's won each of his last two games. For the Colorado Avalanche, though, more importantly, Semyon Barlamov and Jagir Mike have been almost perfect this season. Big saves a key for Barlamov. And Mike, you know inside of this game, the Avalanche want to be better defensively. They have allowed far too many shots on goal the last three games. That will be a key tonight. Red Wings win the opening faceoff, and we have begun what is the first of just two games this season between these clubs. The switch by Detroit to the Eastern Conference makes it one here in Denver, and one later in the season in Detroit. Last year, Red Wings won all three meetings between these two teams. Red Wings are offside coming into the Avalanche zone as we begin things. And show you the rest of the Ford lineup for the Avalanche and the line combinations as well as the defensive pairing. No change from the last game for the Avalanche in terms of their lineup. Same exact when you're winning, when you're 6-0, and when you're the coach, you don't want to change too much if you don't have to. Uh, and Mike, it's a situation for the Avalanche where they have remained healthy and played healthy and everyone's played well. And also, you, you haven't had back-to-back -back games nope. yet either. You've had some rest between games. Avalanche last played on Tuesday in a 3-2 win over the Dallas Stars. Red Wings had the puck at center ice. Jonathan Erickson snaps the pass across, returned back into the Red Wing zone. Just beginning play. First period, a highly anticipated game already this season. Only game seven of the year for the Avalanche, but it's got the makings of a big time game for Colorado. From behind the net, kicked into the corner. Rolling down the boards, Kindle keeps it alive for the Red Wings in the Avs zone. Red Wings have been spending some time in the early going here in the Avalanche zone. Has he yet to penetrate that Red Wing blue line yet? Red Wings still with the puck and a hit by Sarks. Frees up the puck and it comes back to Sarks and he makes the outlet pass to Downey. Slides it through. McKinnon breaks in on the off point. Backhander on target. Loose puck in front between the circles. Tap back to the corner. McGinn with a nice hit. Gets the puck. His pass slowed up. Comes back to the point. Get it shot. And Gustafson makes the save. The more people I talk to around the league that have now seen McKinnon in person, like they're getting more and more impressed with the thing that he does so well. Like it's not just the speed, it's how he uses it. He does not go wide. He does not use his speed to get himself away from traffic. He goes right down the middle. He gets open by causing the defenseman to have to make a decision on the ice. John Mitchell taking the face off for the Avalanche, but his one pulled back behind him by Luke Lennon. And the puck whipped around the boards, where it's handled behind the net by Erickson, looking to make the outlet pass. Up to center, flagged down by Bordalo. Mitchell line is out for the Avalanche, along with Cody McLeod and Patrick Bordalo. Centered by 2-2. Bordalo ends up with the puck after a tip and came out through center ice. Down the ice, the puck goes. Cronwell after it, and he is crushed. Oh, what a hit by McLeod. And then McLeod is thrown down to the ice. Well, I'll tell you what, you talk about getting a little of your own medicine. Cronwall has made a living in this league with big hits, and he just got crunched there by Cody McLeod. Well, Michael, we saw a hit the other night in St. Louis. Lapierre versus Boyle. And he was a five-minute major, and he was kicked out of the game. And when you watch Cromwell, from what I was saying, he was leaning down. He was bent down when the hit came. And there is that dasher with Boyle hit. And, Mike, I don't want to speculate until we see it, but... Well, the... Yeah, this took Peter just two minutes and 13 seconds for something to happen in this uh, longtime rivalry. And uh, Cody McLeod is not going to be able to play in the rest of this game. He is going to get kicked out of this one. And McLeod's coming in. And, you know, it, it, it's, does he see the numbers? Are the numbers right there? They are, Mike. The numbers are right there. And that's, that's the tough one. McLeod is coming so fast, so hard. Look at the numbers, Mike. And... 
you know, he turned back. Yeah. But you think McLeod had the had the opportunity to? You have to ease up. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's you're, as you said. You, you, there's so much energy in this building, and you're so pumped up. And this Avalanche club, you know, they're feeding off of this. And Cody McLeod, this is how he plays. But when you see the numbers, right? That's that. You know, the responsibility falls on you to to slow. Yep. But I'll tell you what, not. Not that he deserves it all, but boy, Cronwell has made some big hits himself oh. through the years. He has made a living by doing that. Yeah, but, Michael, it gets back to what the league has been talking about. You see the numbers, you slow. Yep. And, you know, if, if you're going to get mad at Lapierre for his hit, now Lapierre, he talks a lot, and he's good, a kind of guy that, you know, gets under guy's skin. Cody McLeod is a straight-up, honest, hard-nosed hockey player. But that's, uh, you know, we're looking at a guy that's down on the ice, and a lot of people are very concerned. All right, we're going to have to take a break uh, while they continue to attend to uh, Nicholas Cronwall. We'll be back shortly. More first period action uh, from Denver, the Avalanche, and the Red Wings. Well, that's the last thing you want to talk about, but you have to talk about just how well prepared the medical staffs are, the training staffs are for these things. They practice these kind of circumstances. They, like, they will watch the film of this to make sure they did everything right. They want the player attended to as quickly and as well as he possibly could be. And I'll, I'll tell you, you watch Matt Sokolowski, Scott Woodward. I mean, how they got on there, the doctors. Dr. Andrew Parker here. Yeah. The doctors immediately go. The stretcher bear, the stretcher guys are right there. So as quickly and as well as it can be done, these guys get, you know, in this case, Cromwell out of. And obviously our concern is we oh. hope, hope the best for Nicholas Cromwell that this is not serious injury to him but Peter now we look at the game how if at all does this affect the game oh, it, 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 you're sick to your stomach if you're on the bench I mean you, this is every hockey player's worst nightmare getting carried off on a stretcher and you know it's, it's impossible to just automatically switch right back into okay let's go out there and play hard hockey it, it, it will take a while I do want to tell you that as he was leaving Peter he was waiting yes. to the crowd which is great to so, uh, at least that he was moving, and if we get an update, we'll certainly pass it along and certainly hope the best for uh, Nicholas Cronwall. No score. Now, uh, Erickson did receive a penalty because he grabbed McLeod yeah. after that uh, hit by McLeod. McLeod, uh, McLeod excuse me, uh, a five-minute major for boarding along with the game is comic. McKinnon bursts in and gets a backhander off that's turned aside by Gustafson. That's two big bursts we've seen from McKinnon. One of the things that we were told about McKinnon, Mike, before the Avalanche draft, or just when they drafted him, the bigger the game, the better he plays. Behind the net, puck worked free. Around the boards, a little high in the slot, draws it back to the point. The shot, the save, rebound. There's going to be a penalty on the Avalanche. I think Ryan Wilson's going to get the call. Back towards the point. High in the slot, shot, tipped into the corner. The Avalanche touched the puck, and now the Avalanche are getting called for another penalty. Ryan Wilson headed to the penalty box. Big moments inside of games. When Colorado minor penalty number 44, hooking. Mike, when a game take starts off with so much excitement, and there's a kind of situation that happens that turns everything around, it, it, it's a scrambly feeling on the ice right now. The Avalanche, it's a four on three. We never see four on three. You know, so it's going to take a while for this, and this is a big moment for Detroit to take control of this game. Again, just a review on the penalties. McLeod, oh, five minute major for 40, and a game misconduct. Wilson. Jonathan Erickson for roughing, and now the penalty on Ryan Wilson. He is in the box, and the Avalanche are down a four three situation. The Avalanche penalty killing, Peter, this has been, now you start with your goaltending, which has been great, and he's your best penalty killer, but they've been great. They gave up one power play goal in the first six games this season. That came against Dallas on Tuesday night, so overall, 15 out of 16 killing penalties, and here, perhaps, is the biggest one right now in the season. You do not want to give Detroit early game momentum. Well, they're a tough team to play against anyway, but you give them a lead early, they then they wait and they wait and then you get frustrated, you lose your patience, you attack, and all of a sudden a one-nothing lead is a two-nothing lead for Detroit. Wilson sits in the box. 
Another minute, 24 to go in his penalty. Now it went, Peter, from that four on three. The penalty on Erickson is now over. So now it's a five on three situation. For a minute and, and 24. And remember, that was a major, though, yep. to McLeod. Well, the first guy would come out with yeah, McLeod, I mean, that, that sits out there for the full five minutes. Exactly, that's my point. If they score, they will continue on the power play for the direction of McLeod's penalty. So five on three for Detroit. Scoreless first period. Zetterberg, he's had an outstanding start to his season. Five goals, nine points to the point. Shot. That one deflected away. Barlamov's got to be good in this situation. Have to go with Genin, Haida, and O'Reilly. It's five on three. Two defensemen and O'Reilly. The pass angles, and it comes out to center ice. That'll buy a little time. They're making a change. Two players come off. Haida stays on. Coming out, Stastny, along with Benoit. And Stastny grabs the puck, and he backhands. 30 seconds left in Wilson's That's the key, because that would end the five-on-three situation. Carried in, down the wing. Franzen, right at the blue line. Pass came out. And the wing's got to gather back in the neutral zone. Great shift by Stastny. Twice he forced the, the puck out of the zone. Zetterberg was back towards the point. Daniel Alfredson, long-time Ottawa Senator player. Now with the Red Wings. Well, they have tightened up. They are down low on the avalanche. They push that triangle back. Kindle shot, and that bullet missed wide. And that's uh, the end of the penalty on Wilson. Save made. Zetterberg has the puck. So it's back to five on four. So the avalanche get away with that five on three situation. But they still have some more time to kill. Another minute 12 left in the McLeod major penalty. Zetterberg with the puck. Pass it down low. Who else but Johan Franzen? Avalanche killer. The guy can't score a goal against anybody else, it seems like. Michael, we were looking at it, sort of chuckling before the next game, saying, you know he's going to score. He had no goals the first seven games of the season, but you know he's going to score against the Avalanche. And how does this guy not score against anybody else when you watch this move? He's 6'3", 230 pounds, and watch how agile he is as he, Mikey turns backwards, comes through, and fires a top shelf. I mean, that's not just a... A power goal. That's a great goal. That's a goal scorer's goal right here. Watch me. Gets it back. Nice pass by Zetterberg. Pulls it to the forehand and just just moves it. Why is he not scoring 50 goals in this league? He was he was just <laughs> sick. Seems like it against the Avalanche. When they moved to the East, he was just sick. He was going to lose those games against the Avalanche. His, his whole bonus is right there. Well, that power play goal. Well, the Avs did so good on that five on three, but then the power play goal. So we give you our Pepsi scoring summary. The Red Wings with a 1-0 lead. Johan Franzen, 6.08 the time on the power play. Hendrik Zandenberg and Jakob Kindle. Now the penalty is being called on the, the Red Wings. And one of the guys that Red, the Avalanche fans love to hate, and Todd Bertuzzi, going to the penalty box. And I was just about to say that in the next minute, you expect Detroit to score a goal 5-on-3. It's just, there's got so much talent. But if they score two, that's when things really hurt on a major penalty. So the Avalanche down by one, now Bertuzzi taking away the rest of the power play for Detroit. Detroit. Number 44. That was the key, you're right, Peter. And because of that major penalty, it keeps people aren't aware, you can score as many goals as you can during that time period. And that has been negated with the call on Todd Bertuzzi. So we are back to a four-on-four four situation. 30 seconds remaining in the McLeod penalty. Bortolo is serving that penalty, so he will come out. And then the Avalanche will get a shortened power play opportunity. Now one nothing. Stastny with a chance. Kicked out by Gustafson. Tange feels the puck. Slides it back for Benoit. He shoots. Looking for a tip in front. Stastny was right in front of the net. Puck went away. Now lifted out to center ice. Benoit's got it for Colorado. Danson trying to buy a little time as he has to make a change. Played off the board, trying to get to it himself, but it slapped the other direction by the Red Wings. If the Avs score on the power play, lucky winner will get tickets to an upcoming game for a chance to win. You can register at afwonline.com altitude.
Abs on the power play. This season, four for 21. 40 seconds left in the Bertuzzi penalty. To the point for Tanguy. Slides it across to Shane. Down low. O'Reilly save! Made by Gustafson. Good looking save. Back to the point. Tag it. Fed it across for Duchesne. He's on a three game goal scoring streak. Had two beautiful goals on Tuesday against Dallas, including the game winner. Nice spin by Duchesne. Pass down low for O'Reilly. Duchesne looking in front, trying to make a pass, but it was cut off and then whipped around and out. And that'll do it for the Avalanche power play. It remains a 1 0 lead for the Wings. The Avs had one shot. That was O'Reilly's chance, and Gutsitzen came up with a good save. Pass out to center, tipped by McKinnon. No icing. Been waved off. Erickson hit in the corner by McGinn. McKinnon has the puck for the Avalanche, are reaching for it. So is McGinn. Bertuzzi smashes it, but stays inside the zone. Bertuzzi couldn't get it out of the zone. Finally comes out to center. Zetterberg's pass through the middle, picked up, brought in. By that suit, gets a shot, chest high, rebound, and Varlamov had to be alert, had to be alert again. Zetterberg pounced on it, but Varlamov has covered the puck. The Detroit Red Wings get a power play goal from Franzen. They laid it one nothing in the first. So Johan Franzen, Mike the man they call the mule, has just been deadly against the Avalanche. You look at the games, the goals that he scored against the Avalanche, game-winning goals, the hat tricks. What makes it even more impressive, two of those hat tricks came in the same playoff series. Mike, would you have to say that Johan Franzen had the best individual playoff series against the Avalanche ever? That uh, four-game sweep of the Avs? Uh, I didn't see those games. He was, yeah. Right. He, I'm reminding you. <laughs> I'm filling in the blanks for you. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, yeah, I would say that has yes. to be the single best individual performance. Off the draw, Erickson. Sends it down. Franzen shot. That hit a skate skinned wide. Put back behind the net. Takes to the corner by Franzen. Sarge trying to slow him up. Left that in front by Justin Advocator. Around the boards, O'Reilly. Kept in by the wing. Shot and that is deflected and out of play. But for Patrick Wad, now, Mike, now you're coaching. You're coaching against Babcock. Mike Babcock is. Team Canada, the Olympic coach. This is a good coach. He won, a, he won a gold medal for Team Canada. He knows how to coach, but Patrick Watt tonight is going for that number seven as far as wins in a row. No goal, no coach has ever done that before to start his coaching career. But now he's got a short bench. He's, on, he has, he's down one forward. He's down to 11 forwards. How does he use those 11 guys? Here's a chance for the wings. And it's blocked. Well, there's an opportunity for uh, Daniel Cleary right in front of the net. Never really got a good shot away. Parento gets to the loose puck. Pass into the slot. It ricochets in front. Steered away by Gustafson. Bang back behind the net. Parento shields the puck. Works his way up the boards. Makes the pass. Back to the point for Wilson. To the near circle for McKinnon. Got tripped. No call was made. And the puck comes around the boards. Reaching for it. McGinn. Nice play. Down low, McKinnon turns, he shoots, that was deflected, Parento after it. One of the better shifts at even strength for the Avalanche in this first period. Wings get the puck back. Long pass to center. Now, still seems weird to see him in a Red Wing uniform. Come over from Ottawa as a free agent uh, this summer. But Mike, for the Avalanche, we've only played about 10 minutes, and five of that it was a major penalty, so it's hard to get into that rhythm. That, that they, they need to build off of that shift. Tipped ahead by Gannon into the Red Wing zone. De Kaiser for the Red Wing. Put the puck behind the net. Stolen away is a chance. Oh, man! It hit the crossbar. Landis Scott between the circles with a chance to tie it. Rang it off. The crossbar. Jumped around the boards to the far wing. Reversed. And went off the tangay, popped up in the air, the puck then batted up the boards. Another hit in that corner. What is about that corner tonight? There's been now three hard hits in that corner. By the way, talking about Franz in a moment ago. He's got 11 goals in 17 games for Pepsi Center. Well, it's not just the Avalanche, he likes this building. Yes. <laughs> Detroit here doesn't matter. <laughs> One nothing for the Red Wings. 
power play goal by Johan Franzen. 6-08, his first of the season. And the Wings take the lead. We got an icing call on the Detroit Red Wings, bringing that face off back down into the Red Wing zone. Well, the Avalanche, you know, just talking to some of them yesterday, they, they had an off day as far as going on the ice. They just worked out off the ice. But talking to some of the players, right, they know that, you know, they, ha they cannot allow the number of shots they've had the last three games. They've had 121 shots against in the last three games. Superb goaltending, but you're sooner or later, that's going to bite you. Nice win on the draw by Duchesne, and then the pass back to the point hit a skate and comes to the Red Wings. Bertuzzi. Food as he touches the puck. Fans have a long memory here in Denver. And at center ice, O'Reilly will chip the puck in. The race for it down. after it. Freed up. Banged up the near side boards. Avalanche on it. Center ice. Pass goes across. That's a steals, and he saw Bertuzzi. Cutting down the middle, tried to connect on the pass, but overshot him. Results in a nice and call on Detroit. And for the, the Avalanche, if their best asset is their speed. They are a fast, fast club. And then what you want to do with that speed, Mike, you want to force things all over the ice. You want to be quick on the puck. You want to make it really difficult to make those easy plays in the defensive zone. And you want to hem them in, tire the defenseman out, and make it a long night. Jakob Kindle chips the puck to center. Played back into his own zone. We're getting it. Slides the puck across. Wilson. Got less than eight minutes to go in the first period. One nothing Detroit. Wilson sends the puck in. And we're going to have another penalty call. For this good job by Wilson to draw this penalty. He kept moving his feet for the referee to make the call. When we come back, Avs on the power play. We are back at the Pepsi Center. First period. It is the Red Wings up 1-0 over the Avs. Now, Patrick Carl, cool, calm, and collected as a coach. As a player, a different story. you got to remember this, 1997 against Detroit, against Mike Vernon. Of course, Patrick Rock calling out Chris Osgood for this fight at center ice. Interesting enough, the first intermission, we're going to show an interview. Chris Osgood is now a TV analyst for the Red Wings, so he interviewed Patrick Waugh. This is must-see, you guys. First intermission. Guys. All right, thanks very much, Julie. Right now. Must see if this power play opportunity for the Avalanche. This this gets them back on track for the Avalanche to get a power play goal. I'm always interested who coaches put out McKinnon, the rookies out with Landis Gog and Stastny up front. Seven shots for the Wings, six for the Avs. And second power play opportunity of the game. Oh, Johnson just kept that puck from going to the Red Wings. Right inside the blue line. Parento feeds it back, and Johnson had to really stretch for that. Puck goes to the far wing. Wings have got it. Shot down the ice. Wings have failed to killing this season. 85.7%, fifth best in the league. Parento, patient, moves out to center. Got it behind him from Landeskog. He gains the line, but got poke check. McKinnon trying to hold the puck in at the line. Got it to Parento. As he stick handled, it came just outside the blue line, so it's offside avalanche. Luxury has an address. Cooney Lexus invites you to see the full line of Lexus all-weather drive sedans and luxury utility vehicles for 2014. They're available at Cooney Lexus in Greenwood Village, now open at Bellevue in I-25, and at Cooney Lexus in Colorado Springs. Michael, on the other side of it, for Detroit, they've lost Cronwell. Now, Cronwell is a 25-minute man in a game like this. And he's an all-purpose power play penalty kill in the whole nine yards. So Detroit, five defensemen, and gets a very fast Avalanche team. Tangay's pass, Ooh. chased by Duchesne. He got to it, feeds back towards Tangay, wide pass, down, he had a chance. That one was tipped by Brian Lashaw. Into the corner, Duchesne, fed back for Tangay. Slides it across, Andre Benoit, as working around. Down low, chance for Duchesne. And went wide of the net. Puck scrambled for behind the net. Duchesne's got it. Got checked by Lashoff. And the puck comes around the boards. And it was kept in by the Avalanche. Benoit, nice play. O'Reilly beats back. Tangay wide shoots. Saved by Gustafson. O'Reilly's got the rebound. 20 seconds left in the penalty. To the point. 
Tango, pass. Down he sets up. Benoit with a bullet. Missed it. Bouncing puck. It comes across for Cleary. He tries to clear, but it's flagged down by O'Reilly. And that penalty. And uh, Weiss is over. So Stephen Weiss serving the penalty. He's out of the box. Avalanche 0 for 2 on the power play in this game. So the difference right now, a power play goal for Detroit. Zetterberg comes into the Avalanche zone. Rolls the puck behind the net. 5.20 to go. Here in the first period. 1-0 Detroit. Alfredson chasing the puck to the corner. Hayden puts the hip into him. The puck comes free, and Hayden is still battling along the boards with Alfredson. Alfredson comes up for the puck. Put it behind the net. Alfredson, Datsuk, and Zetterberg. That's a lot of talent. There's a shot. Scoop! Pavel Datsuk makes it 2-0 for the Detroit Red Wings. He just has some of the softest hands in the entire National Hockey League, and the way he made that play epitomizes what Datsuk can do to you. You know, he's so difficult to describe because what he does is such a subtle difference between him and other great players in the league. He just seems impossible to find on the ice. Whether he's carrying the puck, whether he is moving to an opening, he always seems to like to have room to do whatever he wants. And there he's tied up with the rookie you know, McKinnon right there, Mike. You know, that's, a, that's tough. Those are tough situations because he does so many things so well. And he glides away, he pulls away, and then as you say, when he gets down low like that, he's so dangerous. All right, here's your Pepsi scoring summary. Datsuk, third of the season, 15-minute mark. The Kaiser, Alfredson, getting the assist, and a 2-0 for Detroit. With Bronson and Datsuk. A couple old standbys doing some damage. And the Avalanche got a little work to cut out for him. Down 2 nothing. They haven't seen that this season. No, exactly right. They have not been down by two goals so far this year. And Varlamov covers the puck. Did you know? Presented by Stevenson Automotive. Here's the question for tonight. Who scored the overtime goal in the first ever playoff meeting between Colorado and Detroit in 1996? Mike Ricci, C1, Claude Lemieux, C2, or Mike Keene, C3. 53548, where you want to text to win some tickets. Scramble for the puck, on it, Wilson. Shoved up against the backboard, the puck comes around off the glove of Landeskog. Taken from him, shot back to the corner. And Denning. Put in the corner is another collision, this time behind the avalanche net. Nasty. Slip to check. That's Jordan Tutu. You better keep your head up. Nasty. Coming in. Trying to shoot. He got bumped. The puck comes free. Landskog's chance is denied by Gustafson. Well, for Patrick Watt now, does he change the strategy of going with his top line of Stastny, Landeskog, and Tangi against Datsuk? Because now you're, it's a different situation. You're down by two. You're not in control of this game the way you were, have been so far this season. And again, Patrick Waugh has stressed all along. He didn't know that much about his club. He's only had six regular season games. He's learning all the time about different players in different situations. Red Wings ice the puck. There's the whistle for the touches made. Two nothing wings. Space off coming back in the Detroit zone. There is Paul Stanley. The Avalanche looking for some offense after Dansu. There you see him, number 13 of the Red Wings, made it a two nothing lead for Detroit. McKinnon's going to get tossed out of the face off circle. Parento will take the draw. One by the Wings. Welcome Anderson won that face off for Detroit. Avalanche takes the puck to center. Sarge. A vice for McGinn. The Red Wings right on. Over. Picked up by the Wings. Shot blocker save made by Varlamov. He was trying to punch that puck up the far boards, try to get the abs moving. Offside, Detroit. 
You know, and now inside of this game, Semyon Varlamov, who has done, like, he has been breathtaking at times for the Avalanche. I mean, he made one, two, three saves in a row last game against Dallas. You see where he sits as far as save percentage. But these next three minutes and 11 seconds for the crowd, for his team, for everything involved in this game, he, he has to be perfect. It cannot be 3 nothing going into the second period. Pass to center. O'Reilly chips the puck in. Dancer back to retrieve. Rolls it around the boards. Return to the near side corner. Bounced up and out for Susie. Pass. Tipped away. Smashed off the boards. O'Reilly takes it for Colorado. He gets checked but launches the puck into the Detroit zone. Kyle Quincy, the former Avalanche player, sends it out to center. Bertuzzi booed as soon as he touches the puck every time. Duchesne sends it around the board. Steal shot by Datsuk. And that one went wide. Back along the board, there's Datsuk after it. Cut off in the corner by Duchesne. Up the boards. Picked up by Duchesne. He bursts out. He's going to get a breakaway as he moves in. Oh, wow, what a save by Gustafson. He just shot that right skate out in time. I saw Duchesne come over the referee. Yep. He was looking for a penalty there. Watch for Kendall. Does he get his hand stick on Duchesne's hands? Mike, he, he threw him off just maybe a bit. Be interesting to talk to Matt after the game. Because he just, as he went to come down on the puck, he lifts his hands right here. And he just stayed with him. Kendall does a nice job, because that was right in between penalty and no penalty. He saw Duchesne, he lifted his stick yep. up himself so that he was hoping Kendall was swinging at him and would miss the stick, but he got him right in the hands. But Kendall played it well and stayed with the hands. Less than two minutes to go in the period. To Peter, two close calls for the Avalanche. Landis got hit a crossbar, and then Duchesne's partial breakaway there. The great uh, skate save by Gustafson. And three real solid one-timers in the power play that didn't connect. We're talking a lot about uh, Varlamov, but we should, but uh, Gustafson hasn't played a lot, just two games, but he's uh, numbered. I mean, he's, he's making saves, not giving up goals, and he's an interesting story, his background, and how he got here in, in Detroit, and what happened there in, in Toronto. He's finding the home, he and Jimmy Howard, the goaltending duo for the Red Wings. 2-2. Moves the puck into the avalanche zone. Shot wide of the net. Banged around the boards. Pop back out in front of the avalanche cage. Outlet pass goes to Parento. His pass through the middle. Broken up. Remaining in the period. Taken in by Miller. Down the slot. That pass got broken up. Mitchell for the avalanche. He leads McGinn. He shoots it in on Gustafson. Steer that puck wide. McGinn takes it off the boards. Reverses it back down to the side of the net. And Kendall takes it. Jakob Kendall for Detroit. Makes the pass across for Ryan Lashoff. And shot in from center ice by the wings. 30 seconds to go in the first period. Downey. Hayden with the puck back around the boards. Long pass at center. Drop in. O'Reilly. Ten seconds left to go in the period. Downey shot down low. Steered away by Gustafson. O'Reilly on it. Five seconds to go in the period. Duchesne going to have to make a move in a hurry. Downey with the one last chance. Never got the shot away. And the period comes to an end. Well, the Detroit Red Wings trying to ruin the Avalanche party here tonight. And they've got a 2-0 lead, Peter. And, you know, it started off with the cloud hit on Cromwell. Never really got started for the Avalanche for a while. Detroit, nice job. Do what they always do, control a puck, capitalize on a couple, good opportunity. Franzen always scores. And now the Avalanche trailed by two for the first time going into a period. Yeah, here's a good test for the Avalanche in this early season. Franzen and Datsu, the goal scorers for the Detroit Red Wings. Stay tuned, coming up next on Out to Two, the Toyota Intermission Report. Avalanche trailing Detroit 2-0 as we get ready to start the second period of Pepsi Center in Denver. 
And Peter, the Avalanche got to find a way to get some offensive momentum going. They had some chances during that first period, but what do they need to do a little better? No, they need to build off a good power play that they did have. Lannis got at the crossbar, and Duchesne had a break. But on the power play, it was a good move. Second half of the power play, this unit did a real nice job. Downey had a, had a good shot. Duchesne, Benoit, and power play doesn't necessarily have to score, but what it has to do is sort of open things up offensively for the club. And here's Benoit coming across. Just, just good, hard work. And right now, what the Avalanche need is a spark. They need somebody to sort of do something to get things going. Steve Downey, Mike, is one of those guys for the Avalanche all season long. And I don't mean just by going out and hitting somebody or what, just but playing hard, making that big play. And Mike, right, let, let's update people yes. on uh, Nicholas Cronwall. Now, if, if you tuned in late, there was an early hit by Cody McLeod in the uh, corner and uh, one one we understand now with the concussion laceration Ooh. never had to leave the Pepsi Center and so we certainly wish uh, the best for Nicholas Cronwall and hope uh, a speedy recovery for him. Absolutely, and that is good. If he did not have to leave the building, it means he didn't have to go to the hospital. They weren't as concerned as certainly it looked like things were going to be. Tangage pass, kicked out. Oh, you got to be kidding. Oh, that looked like a sure goal. Out of the corner comes Landeskog. Pass to Stastny. Good start for the Avalanche. Stastny, handoff. Hato, pass behind the net for Tange. Centered out in front. Landeskog turns, could not get a shot, but the referee outside of the zone, out in the middle circles, called the penalty. And it's going against Detroit, so the Avs are going to get an early power play. And once again, Todd Bertuzzi goes into the box. One thing about the new big screen that the Avalanche had, oh. the Dectronic big screen, Mike, it makes Bertuzzi even bigger when the fans look at him. There's more to see when they show him the penalty box. But the Avalanche, great opportunity, great shift, but here comes that power play we're talking about that moved the puck so well. Let's see if they can get that momentum going and start to, you know, really get the crowd and get back within one. Uh, watch that replay again. I can't believe Lance Scott didn't put that puck in. The crossbar in the first period and just got rocked by Gustafson it's, there. Yeah, still looking for that person. Like you, you can see it's coming. When you're snake bit, this is what happens, and all of a sudden the dam will break. Let's see if they can at least start the break in this power play situation against Detroit. So far tonight, 0 for 2 on the power play for the Avalanche. So Bertuzzi in the penalty box early in the second period with the Avs down 2-0 to Detroit. O'Reilly, Downey, Duchesne. Steal at center ice by Cleary. Bat back by Downey for Duchesne. Sent it through the middle zone. Benoit and uh, Parento also out for the Avalanche. Parento cannot keep the puck inside the zone. They'll have to chase it back into the Avalanche half. Well, four check pressure put on him. Gives it back to Johnson. We're halfway through the Bertuzzi penalty. Pass to center ice for Parento. Cross ice over the line from Landisgaard. Stasty. To the point, Johnson shoots, and that was tipped around the glass. Parento fed it back behind the net for Landeskog. He finds Stastny in the slot. Shot by Johnson, save, chance. Oh, that one hit the post. Stastny down low for Landeskog. Back to the point for Johnson. Cross ice pass. Parento. Landeskog walks in. He shoots. That hit a red wing and goes wide. 30 seconds left in the Bertuzzi penalty. To the point. One timer by Johnson, save. And waved that, but missed by Parento, and then cleared out. Oh, it's just a game of inches, isn't it? Absolutely. Good first shift, draws a penalty, good power play, good chances. Now keep building on this momentum. Johnson carries the puck, and he cuts in. He's got What a shot! What a shot! Eric Johnson, first goal of the season. And the Avs get a power play goal. They cut the lead in half. You could feel it coming. Something was going to happen on that power play. And if you're Patrick Wall, you're in that locker room between periods. You're looking at your club. You're assessing how are we going to come out and attack the second period. They have come out flying, Mike. And Eric Johnson was the only defenseman, only regular defenseman on the ice yesterday. He was on the ice working with Adam Foot. He was working on shots from the blue line, wrist shots from the blue line. Not Certainly not like that. But just talking about moving his feet, getting the ball, jumping into the play offensively, and he took, I mean, the advice perfectly, Mike, and just steamrolled up the ice.
Peter does a couple of things. Obviously, you're back in the game now. And now you got the crowd. Now, all of a sudden, you got all that happening as we give you our scoring summary. Eric Johnson, his first goal of the season. And the assist goes to the goaltender, Semyon Barlamov. And the lone assist on that power play goal. And the Avalanche come out storming, get the power play goal. They cut the lead at half. Bronson has the puck. He gets checked. And scooped up by him again. O'Reilly and Franzen come up off the ice after they were tangled. Mitchell carries in on the off wing into the Detroit zone. Now can the Avalanche build on that goal? Pass. Benoit shots. But the puck apparently came out of the zone ever so slightly, but enough to have the Avs called for offside. Again, just trying to look at and get a sense, Mike of how this game is turning. The Avalanche clearly have themselves pointed in the right direction. When the Avalanche are coming up the ice, that's when they're at their best. When Detroit is circling that puck around and passing it, that's when they're at their best because they just seem to attack from some part of that circle. Johnson's power play goal here in the second period. The assist going to uh, Varlamov. By the way, his fourth career assist for Lamont. Lashoff has the puck. Pass through the middle. Gets tipped to the corner. Johnson on it. Turned it around. Up the boards. Thank you. Skate to center right. Nice pass. Head to Landeskog. Pulls up against the boards. Breaks free. His pass blocked by Zetterberg and batted out to center. Starts pass. Get it redirected by Tangay at the line. Taken away by Datsuk. When I say taken away, Datsuk, one of the best in the game at takeaways. And, and, and he, he does it seemingly so effortlessly. Just bit, picks the pocket, just, and, and he's gone the other way. Anderson for Detroit. Then a hit by Sarge, frees up the puck. Avalanche have got it on the move. Want to get that skating game going. The ads are at their best because they are really flying. Start yeah. skating. This is this is top three fastest clubs in the league. Puck chased. Gustafson though got to it first to the Detroit goaltender. Swung it off the boards. Quick outlet pass. Alfredson over the line. The give and then the shot off the glove of Farlamov. Red Wings on it. Back to the point. Daniel Cleary shot. Flag down by Parento. And a clearing attempt by McGinn. One, one of the Red Wings players. Is that Alfredson? It was Alfredson yeah. in the face. Alfredson's headed to the Detroit locker room. Shot on the, by Sarge from mid-ice. Gustafson will drop the puck. So Alfredson hit in the face. A turnover. The Avalanche had the puck. Mitchell. And he's got tangled up. And the puck comes out to center. Red Wings have got it. 2-1 hockey game. Poke check. The Avalanche have it, but the Red Wings are being called for being offside. Well, Daniel Alverson, we haven't had a chance to talk about him, but I think it was 18 years he was with Ottawa, and I think a lot of people were stunned when he didn't sign back with the Ottawa Senators and instead offered to sign with the Detroit Red Wings. And what he brings is that another veteran star quality player. They get Stephen White signs a free agent from Florida, Mike, and now that gives them that second line of really good hockey players. And center, 2-2, two -two, shoots the puck in. Barlama hands it off, sent around by Gennon. Tangay shoots the puck ahead. So without McLeod, Patrick Watt has to be inventive in terms of filling that spot. Mitchell has the puck. So he's got Tangay out with Mitchell and Bordalo for this shift. Tangay with a puck centered for Bordalo, but it was blocked by Kindle of Detroit. Hate him. A little help at the line by Mitchell. He delivers the puck deep into the Red Wing zone. Erickson will take it out of the corner. His pass stolen away by O'Reilly. Gives to Duchesne. Down the middle, wrist shot that hit a body. Comes wide. Save, Duchesne found on it. Feeds it back to the point. For Johnson, his shot got tipped. 
And the puck rolling back behind the net. Slowed up by O'Reilly. Up the far boards, out to center. Downey on it for the Avalanche. Pass comes across the neutral zone for Duchesne. Puts the brakes on. Waits, spins away from Weiss. Cuts through the circle. Backhand pass, hit escape. Duchesne will recover. Comes out of the corner with the puck, trying to muscle his way along. Makes the pass. Downey to O'Reilly. Had the chance on the one-timer, but it skipped past him. Pass up ice for Franza. He winds, he shoots, kicked out by Marlamo. Johnson's got it. Laid it off the glass. I'll tell you what, you, you can feel the crowd now. They are into this one here in the second period. Huge goal by Johnson. It, got, it brought everybody back yeah. to this game. Loose puck at the side of the net. Quincy plays it. And it's pushed up by Stanson. Zetterberg has it. Pushed up against the boards by Tangay. Makes a nice, smooth defensive play there. The Avalanche regains possession. Stastny's pass. Landis got He's been snake bit and a couple, couple of really good chances. Wow, what a steal by Datsuk. That, that, that right there is a perfect example of what Datsuk will do to you. Because you think you've lost him. You, you think, okay, I, I pulled away. And he's got this. He's faster than you think, and he's certainly quicker than you think. But Peter also doesn't just bat the puck away from you. He's got it. Well, he's he's steal, but he's then he's in control. And he's going the other way. Out of the corner. Cleary. Pass off the boards. Avalanche can't keep it in. Shot in uh, around the boards by Gannon. Everybody's got to get on side for the Avalanche. That'll give the Wings a chance to break out of their zone. Pass by Lashoff. Off the boards. Avalanche step up. Now they transition to offense. It is Taranto carrying into the Red Wing zone. Trying to get it down the circles. Shot missed. Wilson chips at it. That's blocked. There were four Red Wings standing in front of the net. Gannon out races. Everybody in the puck dropped in the corner for Wilson to come back and pick up. He sends it up ice right at the Red Wing blue line. Bordalo would not get away with the puck. Tipped away from him by Anderson. Carried in by Tutu. It passes the slot. Poke checked away by Mitchell. Again, it reaching for it. Still struggling. Wilson turns the puck behind his own net. Ryan Wilson is third game. Paired with Gannon, Mike, and, and the Avalanche coaching staff is really excited about that pair and what they can do. They can kill penalty, they can be strong physically, and they can throw in some offense. And now leading in shots, 16 to 14. And the Red Wings up in the score, two to one. Chip off the glass and in. And Landeskog to send the puck across. Sarch. Out the pass for Mitchell. He leads Landeskog into the zone. Shots kicked out by Gustafson. He gets sandwiched up against the boards by Lashoff. O'Reilly can't control the outlet pass. Tip to center ice and into the avalanche zone. Scooped up behind the net by Sarch. Sends it to the far side. Pass to center. Downey comes into the zone. Really surrounded by Red Wing, but it comes free. Wow, what a save by Gustafson. Robbing Duchesne. Downey, wide shoots, blood save by Gustafson. Avalanche, you can feel it. They are coming on. They're having a good period. They've gotten a goal from Eric Johnson, but they certainly have had some other chances to tie it. But it's still 2-1 Detroit. And let's look at who is in the groove, presented by Groove Subaru. And boy, is Matt Duchene ever in the groove right now. Anytime you look at a list, you want to look at the people on that list. Matt Duchene certainly is, sits now as the fourth youngest, but Joe Sackett, Michelle Goulet, Matt Sunday, all Hall of Fame hockey players, and Owen Nolan. And here is that, the quickness and the speed. He showed that in the first period. He's had a couple more chances. And it's one of those things, Mike, he just looks so dangerous each and every shift. Certainly does. Had some great chances so far. They haven't really had some opportunities here in the second period. Gotten one goal. Comes from defenseman Eric Johnson. Landis Gago also Guy during this period has had a terrific opportunity. Red Wings with a puck for Tuzzi. Skates into the Avalanche zone. Pushed away from the puck by Hayda. Zetterberg. Turns and shoots. Directed away by Varlamo. Thank you. Sends the puck across. Johnson. Over the line. Comes in. Gustafson will steer the puck to the corner for Quincy to take. Flag down, Stastny centers, shot by Landon Skog, and that one hit a skate and goes wide. But he's continuing to get those chances. Certainly is. Zetterberg 
lifts the puck in. Sark to Bertuzzi on him. Steal by Bertuzzi, but Johnson then stole it back for the Avalanche and wobbles the puck down the ice into the Red Wing zone. Scooped up. Carried in by the Wings. Shot! by a bullet. Missed high by Alfredson. Avalanche got a chance. Down he has him. He had Duchesne. I think Kendall may have tipped that. Kick back out in the center. And again, you see the speed of the Avalanche. Causing those odd man breaks. Duchesne poke checked in center, but Sarch leads O'Reilly into the zone. He shoots save. Rebound shot missed by Downey. It got tipped out of play. Well, the ads keep coming, but so far, just one goal during this period, and it belongs to Eric Johnson. Colorado State University Global Campus. Finish your bachelor's degree or earn your master's 100% online from CSU Global. You can apply now at csuglobal.edu. Well, Gustafson, Mike Simon is a free agent of Toronto Maple Leafs. His nickname is The Monster. And, you know, everyone thought this was the next big goaltender. Went to Winnipeg, signed now with Detroit. These three games he's played this, this season, and this one has been absolutely outstanding for the Detroit Red Wings against Boston, who they beat. He was not even supposed to start the game. Jimmy Howard got hurt in warm-up. Erickson will scoop back behind the net. Long pass to center. Good play by uh, Nate Gannon to knock that puck away from Franzen. Scramble out at center. Perzo. Pass for McGinn. Backhand try. And through the crease and wide. And the wings tip to center and create a two-on-one opportunity. Applicator. Pass. And Franzen reached up. He touched it. Aren't we? Yeah, he had us. He, okay, he, I thought that should, have, should be stopped with a play using a high stick. That is the case. And one of those amazing, I mean, again, the puck goes up. Wasn't a great pass, but he, but he gets it. A anything he touches in this building, even a puck over his head, <laughs> is, is dangerous. Oh, he, 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 he is scary against the avalanche. Red Wings up two to one. Two first period goals, power play goal by Franzen. His first of the season, and then Datsuk with his third. 15 minute mark, but then a power play goal. 2.36 in the second period for the Avalanche. 2 1 in favor of the Red Wings, but the Avalanche having a better period here in the second. Nasty with the puck. Hand off. Hayda walking in and shot. Stick save made by Gustafson. Zetterberg flips the puck to center. Pass comes across for Zetterberg. Trying to split the defense. Broken up. The Avalanche came back to support. Then the puck bounced away, and Varlamov has to cover for a faceoff. Mike, watch, watch Pavel Datsuk on this play. Watch how the stick handling just is absolutely so brilliant. He'll get the puck, Mike. He puts the puck between the feet on purpose. He puts it on a place where the defenseman has to look down at the puck. Watch him just chip it right there. And then play after. After Johnson swings his stick at him, then he plays the puck again. You can't make this stuff up. It's unbelievable. There aren't too many guys who can do it. Fun to watch. Kindle. Sends it around the boards. Miller will get to the puck for Detroit. He takes a hit from Sarge. That frees up the puck, and then they came back at Sarge. They go at each other a few more times. Here we go. We got our first fight of the game. It is Corey Sarge taking on to Drew Miller. Left and a big left by Sarge. A right by Sarge. Oh, man, what a hit. Man, just pounded away, and Miller. Now things slow down a little bit. Corey Sarge landed a left and then a right. And he spin out to center right. Another left by Sarge. Another left by Sarge. Brown just loving it. Another right by Sarge. He's landed some punches. Then he throws them down to the ice. Corey Sarge beats Drew Miller in a fight. Well, you knew, Mike, it, it would take this game to bring out the first fight of the season for the Detroit Red Wings. <laughs> this is the first fight this year for them. And the Miller takes a set, 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 exception to Sarge. Mike, the one thing that maybe we haven't talked about, he's a big man. He's 6'3", 215, Sarge. And 
He gets some, I mean, some heavy, heavy shots in. Right, they're, they're showing up on the yes. big screen crowd to reliving the fight they just saw with Sarch beating Miller in that fight. I'm telling you, Peter, this, as far as these fans concerned, this rivalry is still going strong. Yeah. They're, they're enjoying this one here tonight. But for the Avalanche, what's happening here in the second period? What is going on? For Colorado, why are they? What's happening better for them? Well, I mean, you have to go and you have to look at the fact. Okay, we're down two nothing in the first period. What was said in the loss? The first time they've been down. First time they've been down by two goals in a game. So, you know, did they challenge themselves? Did Patrick Law say, "Hey, you know, let's just change this and this"? It'll be interesting to see because they have come out as a like a different hockey club in this second period, and it was from the first shift by Stastny's line. Peter, here's your chance for the Avalanche because Sarge and Miller each get five minutes for fighting, but add a two-minute minor for cross-checking to Miller. And so the Avalanche get another power play chance. They are one for three in this game. Their fourth power play chance has begun. And down by a goal. They go to work. They have scored five power play goals this season. Pass the line for Duchesne. Looking around the board, scuffs us in the Detroit goaltender, cut it off. Got into the corner, and then it's cleared down the ice. Run right behind the net, Benoit with the puck. And this second period is belonged to the Stastny's line. Let's see how they do. Landeskog out on the ice right now. Nice pass. Landeskog to the front of the net. He got the doubled up, but Downey comes away. His shot stopped by Gustafson. Downey trying to slip that puck over towards the boards, did so. For the defenseman Benoit. He feeds to Atlanta Scott. Down low for Duchesne. A power play for the Avalanche. Trailing by one. Shot saved. Missed by Duchesne on that rebound. Just missed it as he took Fred to take a shot. 45 seconds left. And that penalty on Miller. It's a minor penalty. Parento. The killing out to center. Patient. Waits. Gives the puck to uh, Johnson. But the Avalanche are offside. Well, here's sort of a, for any Avalanche fan that's been around since the beginning, here are the penalty minute leaders. And the names on the list are, are basically legendary inside of this rivalry. You got Martin Lapointe, Darren McCarty, your fan club member. Adam Foote, Claude Lemieux, Adam Denmark, Peter Forsberg, the one that I always got a biggest kick out of. He's on the list. Shots go! Just, he was relentless. I mean, it's not really a breakdown by the Red Wings on that faceoff. It's more just the will of Landeskog. He breaks through, goes to the outside, and puts it through Gustafson. And Mike, I, I was watching Landeskog right after he scored, and he looks straight up. That is a whole great big bunch of weight that he dropped off his shoulders. Big goal at a big time for the captain. That's a, Peter used the right word there. When you need your captain to come up with big goals on that, that's the biggest one of the season right now. And you start, you start looking at this game now, and you start assessing who was the, McDo the McLeod hit. Now, the McLeod hit was a hockey play that went back. I mean, it's no question. And, but it took Cromwell out of the game. And Cromwell is their best by far defense. Well, we are tied at two. Get it. Hammers the puck in. Abs are now out shooting the Red Wings 23 to 15. Mitchell chopping at the puck, but the Wings come up with it. Pass. Goes across. Equalizer. Dumped in around the boards. Begins pass through the middle. Wings will get possession back. Two to two again. Here in the second period. A couple of power play goals. Johnson and then Landeskog. Landeskog, goal coming at 14-42, assisted by Stasny. Back to the point, shot, missed the net. Back around the boards, Anderson on it. 
into the corner. Where, oh, it's going to be a foul. Mitchell is going to go to the box for his trip in the corner. Avalanche celebrating with that goal by Landis going to tie it, but now they've got to kill a penalty. Introducing your Ram Truck Avalanche Ice Girls. Ram Trucks, engineered to move heaven and earth. Ramtrucks.com. Well, for Gabriel Landeskog, scores his first goal, but watch right from the faceoff. Wow. We're going to highlight Gabe Landeskog right there. And you watch how he breaks through. And like this is that power play, the power move that he has. He stays to the outside. Gustafson, you know, he was, didn't play that perfectly, but it was a good, quick, hard shot by a guy that has just been driving at the net this whole game. There you see John Mitchell in the penalty box. A tripping penalty called at 15:46, and the Red Wings on their fourth power play chance of the game. They're one for three. First power play chance here in the second period. Two to two game. That's it. At the half boards. Get it. Tangay on him. Sends the puck towards the corner. Tangay's got it for the Avalanche. Backhands it up and out. Red Wings will corral it out at center. Alfredson heading up ice. He leads Zetterberg to the Avalanche line. Nice poke check. The clear by Tangay hit Datsuk and then batted with the glove by Hayden out to center ice. Datsuk pass behind Zetterberg, the captain for the Red Wings. Sends it back into the Detroit zone. And Mike will mention it again. Hayda, get it. Ice time, killing penalties. That that was a defensive pair for the Avalanche. Zetterberg weaves his way in to the Colorado zone. To the point for Alfredson. Slides across for Kindle. His shot stopped in front of the net. And it is covered by the goaltender, Varlamo. To learn about your new health insurance options, check out Connect for Health Colorado online at connectforhealthco.com. Or you can call the customer service center. Buy today, be covered in January. Well, for Patrick Waugh, he set his rotation as part of the next couple of games for the Avalanche. Obviously, Barlama starting here tonight, but J.S. Shaguer will start the game in Buffalo for the Colorado Avalanche. Mavs on it. The puck comes along the near side boards. Red Wings got it back. Quincy at the point. Down the boards for Franzen to the corner. Benoit. Uh, get it away from Abdelkader to the wings, and Franzen took it. He gives it. Weiss in the slot. Still free, centered, shot, gets blocked by the Avs. That was Landis guy who got in the way, and he'll chase the puck. Here's into the Detroit zone, cutting to the front of the net. That's around, wraparound try, got denied. But that took some precious seconds off the clock. Pass stolen away. O'Reilly, another takeaway. Last seconds of the power play chance for Detroit. Franzen. One-handed by McGinn. Pass whipped across. The Avalanche kill the penalty. Mitchell's out of the box. The Avs kill the penalty. And it's still a 2-2 hockey game. Big kill in this hockey game. The Avalanche, a couple power play goals. A big kill right there. It stays at two. And Stoyce with a special team for the Avalanche in the second. And we're under two minutes remaining in the second period. Shot saved by Varlamov. He had to be alert. And then look at Johnson in front of the net. Protecting his goaltender. Mike, here's it. I've never been a big fan of this, but when you look at it, Mike, you have to be a fan of it. Give away, take, probably takeaways in the National Hockey League since 2011. Datsuk, Marion Hossa, Ryan O'Reilly, and Jonathan Tapes. Those are around O'Reilly are three of the best players in the game today, no question about it. All Stanley Cup winners. So for Ryan O'Reilly to be on that list, Mike, that is extraordinarily impressive. Well, we've seen some great takeaways from him tonight. And from Datsuk. It's been a good battle sure of has. what those guys do so well. Uh, Datsuk's out on the ice. He'll take this face off against Stastny. Avalanche get the draw. Landis got Lopped it off the glass. Got it out. 140 to go in the period. Erickson for Detroit. Pass comes across to Lashoff. 
He gets checked by Stastny. Turned back into the Detroit zone. Lifted. The puck lands at the Avalanche blue line. Tapped ahead. Stastny's pass was into the Detroit zone. Harrison off the boards. Avalanche stopped that threat at mid-ice. Landis Scott carried the puck in. Finds Stastny. Sends it around the boards. Erickson back in and around. And out the center, Benoit backing up. Lifts the puck high in the air. One. No icing on the play, and Erickson will take it for Detroit. We're in the final minute of the second period. Again, ties up his man. Coming after it, McKinnon to the point. Shot into the corner. Red Wings get to the puck. Bounced off the boards up ahead. And Anderson will lift it in. Tapped to the corner by the goaltender Varlamov. Quick pass. 30 seconds to go. Parento rink wide pass for McGinn, broken up by the wings. 2 2 overskates the puck, reaches back for it. leans in. Shot knocked down by Barlamo. 20 seconds to go in the period. Benoit's got it for the Avalanche. His pass up ice. The red line bounced into the Avalanche zone. Last 10 seconds of the second period. Pass to Franzen. He floats that one in and. Going to run out of time here in the second period. But this period has belonged to the Avalanche. Big penalty kill late in the period, but it was the power play goals by Johnson and Landeskog that have changed the momentum in this game. And it started in right in the first shift. Stastny's line with Tange and Landeskog set the tempo for a period. The Avalanche absolutely dominated. Eric Johnson in the power play at 2.36. And then Landeskog also in the power play at 14.42. Those were the two goals. During the second period. Stay tuned for the Subaru Intermission Report. Came roaring back in the second period. They've tied the game two to two. A pair of power play goals by the Avalanche sets up what should be a magnificent third period of play. You count on your captain for a number of things. You want to lead the team, you got to talk to the referees. And you want your captain to come up with big plays. That's what happened for the Avalanche in the second period. And it started right off the bat to start the second period. You mentioned, Mike, when the Stastny line started, Landeskog drew a penalty after a real good shift. And then all of a sudden, it was all starting to come together for the Avalanche. This is in the first period where he actually bounces one off the crossbar. But you could feel him coming on in this hockey game, making the big plays, driving towards the net. And for the Colorado Avalanche, you watch him tie the game up right here. Mike, this is, so, it's always so fascinating. We watched the first period where Detroit looked like that experienced club that was going to come in here and take the emotion, even with the penalty that was called earlier, the five-minute penalty, the end, scored a power play goal, and then Datsuk makes a beautiful play, it's 2 nothing. Then the Avalanche went completely just control the second period. Mike, they've been getting... I mean, in a lot of shots against in the second periods of late, and they only had five in that period. They completely turned the, the game around the second period, but now it's down. It's all even. Who is going to be the game breaker in this game? It is going to be a player that is going to make the play in this period. Which goaltender comes up with yep. the big save? I mean, you could make the case that Gustafson's goal that he let in weren't, uh, you know, great goals. So is he sitting back a little bit? He really has made some great saves. Oh, yeah. So. Here's a chance. Save made by Barlamov. Thank day for the Avalanche. Trying to peel away with the puck. Stastny. Had it for a moment, and Dastry put it out in front. Swatted that by Alfredson and went wide. Johnson for the Avalanche. Stick Halen out in the center. Makes the long pass to Landeskog. Pass over the line for Stastny. He gets checked. Landeskog reaching for the puck. Game tied at two as our third period has begun from Pepsi Center in Denver. Tangay, side of the net, trying to free up the puck. Game back behind the Detroit net. Datsuk has it for the Red Wings. It's the red line, got poke checked by Stastny, but it's followed up by Franzen. He'll shoot the puck to the corner. Franzen along the end board. Let's it roll to the corner. Bertuzzi fired a pass in front for a wife. Lifted it back to center by the Avs. O'Reilly angles the puck to the corner. Duchesne can't get there in time. Bertuzzi picks up the puck, lifted up the boards, sent across 
Zone zone for Franzen. Back into the avalanche zone. Chipped away by O'Reilly, but held at the line by the wings. Bertuzzi had the puck for a moment. Taken from him, Duchesne leaves it for O'Reilly. And into the zone. The Red Wings on the move. Weiss will shoot the puck ahead. Get it. Bertuzzi on him. Sends the puck behind the net. Well, the Red Wings, after that second period, really scrambled up their lines. Duchesne waits. Gets away from one defender, trying to power his way out in front. He got held up enough that the puck rolled free. The puck carried through center by Cleary. Makes the pass over the line. Shot there. And whoa! Big time save by Varlamo. There's that key save, perhaps. We can look back on that one as McKinnon sprints in. He shoots. Oh, what a save on the other end. Both goaltenders just came up with a spectacular save. But there was a little of that McKinnon speed that right. we've been getting glimpses of. And, and, and this is the exciting part. We're not even close, Mike. We're not even remotely close to what he's going to be able to do. But we talked about this, Mike, in the pregame show. The idea of, look where he is driving. Here's the first save. Watch Barlamov make, again, the, the big save at the right time. And then as the play goes the other way, McKinnon was just rocketing through that neutral zone. Perito shot saved by Gustafson. And McKinnon knocked down in front of the net as Gustafson makes the glove save on Perito. And look at this McKinnon in conversation there with the referee Tim Peel. But we put on that last play, Mike, when Gustafson, pardon me, when McKinnon came through the zone, that, that drive through the guy. He doesn't try to go around. He'll, he will go through you if he needs to. Again, out to the faceoff. Mavs get it. Starts to go stick handle back out of the uh, zone. And uh, we'll have the face off the first out in the neutral zone. For the 50 50 raffle, so we've got a new number for tonight. A lucky winner now at $2,438. And now again for Pat for Quab. You talked about it, but it, it's, it's there for him. The idea you're down a forward, so you're going to be mixing and matching lines, or you're just going to go with three lines. The Avalanche schedule to this point has been very player friendly, and they have a lot of days off, at, you know, coming up starting next week, so. You can drop down to three lines if that's what you need to do in tonight's game. Red Wings move the puck through center. Long pass for Dentu. He's got a goal in this game. Shot close. Shot by Varlamov. Taking that chance away from Daniel Alfredson. And yeah, we've got Alfredson up now with the big guys. Datsuk and Zetterberg. Alfredson started back on a different line, but, you know, he is... Like he's tremendously gifted and a great quick shot. He is down, down in close. Wings win the draw. Alfredson. His shot blocked by Johnson. Alfredson recovers. Puck comes out to center. Landeskog for the Avalanche. Flicks it into the Red Wings zone. Zetterberg for Detroit. Hand off to Datsuk. Dick Allen is way in. Couldn't get by Tange, and Landeskog will take the puck for Colorado. Fires a pass across. Jan Hayden hits the center. Send it back behind him for Eric Johnson. Patient, and shoots it into the Red Wing zone. Avalanche make a wholesale change. Five new skaters come out for Colorado. Dumped in from center ice by the Kaiser. From Detroit, one of their defensemen, shot around the boards and out by the Avalanche. Getting a little more cautious here oh, in the third yeah, period. Absolutely. And when you when you see a cautious game, you see a lot of players in the neutral zone. You see a lot of plays decided in the neutral zone. Benoit's pass. And the bounce off of Bronson back to Benoit for the Avalanche. Right up the middle, Duchesne. Tripped as he came over the line, but no penalty call. Jakob Kindle's pass. Deflects to the avalanche blue line. Wilson feeds to O'Reilly. He's got a man down the slot. Tip! Wide by McKinnon. Red Wings counter the other way. Advocator. Skates to the avalanche line. Got checked by Parento. 
McKinnon for the avalanche. Hooks the puck behind the net. Wilson will chase it. Shot by Abdelkader, goes wide of the net. Anderson on it for the Red Wings. Takes a hit, but delivers the puck to the corner. Wilson tying up Cleary. Abdelkader got it back for the Red Wings. Shoots to the corner. Wilson brings up the puck to McKinnon. He gets checked and taken down by Abdelkader right on top of the puck. Poke free. Wilson to the corner. Abdelkader steals, shoots, and Varlamov was tied up against the post to make the save. Let's see what's on tap for the Avalanche. This is brought to you by Coors Light. Saturday, Avs are back on the road and headed back to the East Coast. They'll visit the Buffalo Sabres. We'll begin our coverage at 4.30 Saturday on Altitude. Well, one of the things that Dallas did so well last game, they brought their defensemen into the play. They pinched down and created a lot of turnovers. You want to tire out the Detroit defense and not have them have the energy to do that. Uh, I think Tangay is going to get a fucking penalty. Gutson on his way to the bench. Extra skidded out for Detroit. The late penalty on Alex Tangay. Shot wide by Zetterberg. Cut off behind the net by Landeskog. And Tangay is headed to the penalty box, and Detroit's about to get their fifth power play Colorado, chance of the game. Number 40, two minutes, hooking. This penalty coming at 534 in the third period. In a 2-2 hockey game. Mitchell, O'Reilly up front, Gannon, and Hayda again. Uh, it, it, this, this, is, this is their group. Remember, it would be McLeod, but he is not in the game right now for O'Reilly. Now low, Datsuk to the point for Alfredson. He finds Datsuk, inching his way along the boards. Zetterberg in the corner, goes back to Datsuk. Red Wings power play, centering try, Varlamov covered uh, the puck came free, but there was a whistle. Boy, for Hayda, that is such a tough play. You're standing right there, and that puck gets in your feet. You, you can't play it with your stick. What he does is try to move it back to Varlamov, but the, the, the puck was pushed away, but fortunately for the Avalanche, the referee is in behind the play. But good, smart play again by Hayda. Again to the corner, Datsuk on him. Goes Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi gives the puck to Datsuk. Pass to uh, Bertuzzi, fumbled it. But Datsuk feeds it over to Zetterberg. To Alfredson, back to Zetterberg. Pass in the slot. Kindle walks in, he shoots. Missed, centered out in front. And Gennon finds the glass and got it out. Boy, you got to tip your cap to Datsuk. There were a couple of fancy yeah. little passes there. But the Avalanche, whether that storm is still a minute five remaining. In the penalty on Tange. Mitchell got a man up by so Riley. Oh, he had a breakaway chance. It was just tipped in the last moment. O'Reilly flipped the puck in the slot. Suck shot and Kindle, the defenseman, came across to break it up. Mitchell behind the net. Got starch in front. Applicator stole the puck. Mitchell's trying to tie him up. Use it up two seconds. Good work from John Mitchell. Alfredson comes to center ice. Comes in over the line. Pass broken up. Applicator follows. Centers. Franzen scores. Oh, my goodness gracious. Johan Franzen with the goal. His second of the night. And he's given the Red Wings a 3-2 lead with his second power play goal of the game. Off of the avalanche, Mike, there's just that little bit of a misread along the bench with Mitchell coming up. He didn't have a stick. He wanted somebody to jump on. They didn't, and that allowed a little pressure from Detroit. And all of a sudden, the great passing down low. And Franzen, who somebody just got to... I mean, it, 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 he had no goals. In seven games this season, he's got two here tonight. And beauties. I mean, not just off his rear end. I mean, they've been great shots. Let's look at our Kia scoring summary. Johan Franzen continues to be that avalanche killer. Second power play goal in the game. It comes at 7-10. Just an applicator. Daniel Alfredson, the assist. There's your Kia scoring summary. 3-2 lead for Detroit. Boy, it's been a power play.
scoring game. Two for the abs, two for the wings. Puck rolls for a begin. 12-15 remaining in the third period. And the abs find themselves down by a goal here in the third. Larry's pass. Knocked in and redirects towards the net. Varlamov covers the puck. And we'll be back. Red Wings use their power play to take the lead in the third period. Let's answer tonight's Did You Know question brought to you by uh, Stevenson Automotive, Colorado's home team. We asked you who scored the overtime goal in the first ever playoff meeting between Colorado and Detroit in 1996. Mike Keene. And congratulations, Tony. You knew the correct answer. Well, I remember that game as if it was yesterday. Yeah, what a great moment that was. It was on the heels of that series against the Chicago Blackhawks. It seemed like every game was double, triple overtime. Yeah. And Detroit had played a long overtime game in game seven against St. Louis right. that year before Iserman scored to send them on and everyone's for Detroit said so they were just a little tired. But then in game two, Patrick Watt threw a shutout. And went on to win that series in six games. In fact, Patrick Watt was asked this morning at his press conference his favorite moments brought up that series and what it meant to him to beat Detroit because it was that game against Detroit earlier while he was with the Canadians that led to him being traded. So he really wanted that revenge. Out of the corner. Down. Bounces back. Sharp shot. Knocked down by Gustafson. Loose puck. Bounce back to the point. Benoit. Moving along the blue line. Finds Downey. Protects the puck, back to the point. Benoit's wrister blocked in front of the net. Up to the center ice. That hopping puck fielded by Benoit. Finds Duchesne. A little hesitation at the line causes the play to be offside, although Duchesne arguing about it. Avalanche, young club, going against this kind of defensive pressure that Detroit's throwing now. This is where you've got to have patience. There's, you know, you're, you're so frustrated with each shift because you're not getting what you had in that second period where you were in the zone getting chances. That's been slowed down by Detroit. But you're waiting for your one chance. If your one chance comes and you're frustrated about there having been a bunch of chances, you can't give it away. It's going to be there, but you've got to be ready. Long shot by Johnson. Gustafson, block. here's a chance. Now, oh, another great save. Another shot. Another save by Gustafson. Whacked at by Hayda behind the net. Freed up. Stasty. Knocked down. Popped back up after the puck into the corner for Tagge. Centered. They come back off the boards. Good work by Hayda to hold it in. Shoots it wide of the net. Stasty comes up with the puck. Feeds it back. One-timer. Hayda right into the glove of Gustafson. Well, since the start of the second period, offensively, this has been the Avalanche best line. They've got things going to now. Again, Good shift. Landis Cup had a great chance on sort of a funny little bounce. Right there, nice play by Stastny. Kicked that puck back to Landis Cup. McKinn circles, centered. Parento can't get to the bouncing puck in time to get a shot. To the point. Chance by Ginn. Sounds wide. Around the board, McKinnon waved at it, flicked it along the shelf for Parenteau. Put it on goal, saved by Gustafson. McKinnon reversing out of the corner. Played it off the board, back to the point. Wilson's wrister looking for a tip from Parenteau. Came out in front of the net, but McGinn was pulled down, and again, no call. He was pulled down right there at the side of the net, and no penalty was called. Had it sent in Parenteau. Carries the puck in, but got held up. And the play is offside, and now there's that argument about why there was no uh, penalty. Here's the play. No penalty. Well, the Colorado Avalanche are trying to get things going off as you might get. I think the bomb is gone. I think that big bomb from the point is gone. Watch Ryan Wilson. He looks, he looks up, he says, I can't, if I go for the big bomb, it's going to get blocked. And you're seeing more and more defensemen. In practice, in the morning, we saw this Detroit this morning, all of them shooting wrist shots from the point. Eric Johnson yesterday working with Adam Foote, wrist shots from the point. You wind up the guys on you so fast, you've got no shot of getting it through. The shit, you know, those, those great big slap shots may soon be a thing of the past. 
Well, here's the situation. 9.57 remaining in the third period. 3-2 lead for the Red Wings. Faceoff controlled by Detroit. And a turnover. Landeskog upended. The Red Wings get the puck back. Abel Detsu leaves it in front of his own net for Zetterberg to take. What up, Vice? By the Kaiser. His pass tipped by Landeskog, but it comes to Detsu. He shoots it and bounces past Barlamov. It's going to be ruled an icing on the Detroit Red Wings. Hey, if you're looking for a great car, go no further than checking out all new Kias at ColoradoKiaDealers.com. Look at the full lineup. Kia's uh, high quality, stylish, and dependable vehicles. Just over one of the dealerships today. Great looking cars. And the referees decided that no, it wasn't an icing call, so they face off at center ice. Harrison after the Wings. Another draw. Comes the puck in. Around the wing to the far side. Behind the net. White turns and shoots. That was stopped by Varlamov. Pass up ice for O'Reilly. Trying to give it to Duchesne on the fly. And the Red Wings doing their best to clog that neutral zone, not allow the Avalanche to get their speed going through the middle. Down, he steals the puck in the corner. Makes the pass, O'Reilly. Back to the point. Benoit walks in. He shoots, had it blocked. Recovers. Benoit moves behind the Red Wing net. He gets crushed along the boards by Franzen. And the Red Wings make the out of the pass. Ethel kid. Skates into the corner. 8.30 left in the period. Shot by Kindle. Deflects to the corner. Miller. Reverses, shot by Barlamov, then covered by the Avs goaltender. But for a goaltender, like, the pads are a little smaller this year. The five hole is a little bit more open. So, you know, right there you just saw how, how solid low Barlamov was on that play. Wings on it. Shot by 2-2. Misses. Short side. Around the board. The puck goes. Center right to the pass for Wilson. The defenseman shoots it into the Detroit zone. Bordelow. Going after that hit. Red Wings don't come up with the puck. Shift in. Flagged down by Gennon. Could not push it away. Red Wings have it at the side of the avalanche net. 2-2 on it. Pass back to the point for Kindle. His shot comes wide. Centering try. Gifted to by the wings. Deflected back to center ice. Kindle makes the long pass through the middle. And then angled across to the corner. Race for the puck. Again it. Quick out the pass. Tangay takes it. His pass. Tipped out to center ice by Mitchell. Couldn't reel in the loose puck. Anderson shoots it from center. Back into the avalanche zone. 7.30 remaining in the third. And need a goal to tie. Thank you. We're on the board for the puck. Back to the point. Pass. Erickson had it blocked by Landeskog. Stunned a little bit. Landeskog's limping as he heads to the Avalanche bench. Shot from center by Stafford. Gustafson. And it comes around the boards. Hayna walks in. He shoots. That one picked off in front by Erickson. Comes back to the point. Whining. Shooting. Hayna missed it. Back up the boards. Tip to center ice, Cleary one on one with Hayden. Hayden stretching and then forced a, a, then a tip. Sends the puck out to center ice. Rammed right back in around the boards of the Avalanche zone. Mike, I'm watching Gabe Lannis on the bench and he is really in pain. Steal by the wings, Alfredson cutting in, waits. Still waiting, now pass, backhander, save, score. Pavel Datsuk, there was that, uh, those, uh, some of the best hands in the leg. And that's where they can pay dividends for you. That makes it a 4-2 lead for Detroit. Well, Alfredson, who reads the play so well, and he will be one of those guys that will come up with those turnover situations, Mike. And right here, he just waited, waited, the avalanche, one slide, two slides, and all of a sudden, Mike, when you slide, things will open up. If, uh, when you player slides, 
you better make the play work because all of a sudden there's one guy that's gone through there's two guys that are gone through something's going to be open and that's it i mean look at the play off the feet look, i mean he takes a little backhand shovel it's coming back kicks it forward to a forehand bang puts it in well, that's been the Franz and Dentsuk show tonight for Detroit, each with a couple of goals. Franz is on the power play, two even strength goals scored by Pavel Dentsuk. And it's 4 to 2 for Detroit. Six minutes left to go. There to center by Sarch. Just to pass it down. Shift in. Bill Danzig, fourth goal of the season from Daniel Albertson at 13:35, two goal advantage for the Wings, second two goal lead of the game for, Col for Detroit. Colorado came back earlier to tie the game at two, but now two third period goals for the Wings. Kendall pass to center. Bertuzzi one hands it over to Cleary, and he yanks the puck in. McKinnon. Backhanded around the boards. Aired out the center ice. Begins pass right at the line. Parento checked immediately. And the wings have it. Goes through center. Dumps the end up by Dadsuk. He'll go get it in the corner. Boys one check. Backhand the pass. Back to the point. Got by Lashoff. Guided towards the corner by Barlamov. And Parento. Gets it up ice for Portolo. Couldn't hold the puck. Wings have got it again. Dantzuk turns and shoots. It was slowed up. The Avalanche have it with 4.35 remaining in the third period. They'll make a line change. But if you're Detroit, that's the kind of shift you want. Just a good minute or so in the Avalanche zone. Back in and out to center ice. Lifted in. Thank you off the glass. Passed out to center ice. Brought in it down the wing by Mitchell. He shoots. Knocked down by Gutson. And brought out to center ice. Franz sends the puck in. That goes wide to Barlamo. Rammed around the boards. Carried through the middle and in over the line. Comes a Stassi. His shot slowed up and tipped to the corner. Backhand is out of play. And we got a whistle back in a few moments. And has got a little work. After Danzig's goal has made it a 4-2 lead for Detroit in the third. Well, Detroit up 4-2 by the Avalanche. And let's have a quick look at the Western and Eastern Conference now. 16 teams in the East, including Columbus and Detroit, who moved over. And Winnipeg joins the Western Conference. But right now it is a twice a year situation with the Detroit Red Wings and the Avalanche will have a home and home with the Red Wings from this time on. Instead of a Western full Mike, they move all the way to the East. That's it against Stassi for the faceoff. There might no Landis dog out here. Block the shots. Limped off early. Center ice. Johnson backing up. Bangs the puck across. Made up, stripped of the puck by Dancer. Works his way up the boards. Backhands it towards the corner. Even to Zetterberg. He gets bumped by Johnson. They battle that back. Johnson knocked down Zetterberg. Center ice, Stanton throws the puck back to Eric Johnson through the middle. And Erickson will take the puck for the Red Wings. Just under three minutes left in the third period. And down by two, it becomes gamble time for the Avalanche. And also something that we haven't seen yet this season, pulling the goal to. 35 left. Bronson with the puck along the backboard, trying to come out in front. He gets back up, chased by Wilson. That Bronson, he is tough to contain. 
Abdul Kader. The puck to the corner. Back up the boards. Pass comes across. Through the middle. Duchesne. To O'Reilly. Barlamov has made his way to the bench. He gets there with 207 remaining. So the Avs with an extra skater on with Barlamov on the bench. Duchesne had Downey wide open on the far side. Could not get that pass through. Downey chasing the puck along the boards. O'Reilly centered out in front. Shot! Save! Rebound chance. Duchesne shot another save by Gustafson. And the puck is picked up. Johnson shot. That one deflects wide. And Bertuzzi without a stick. Lost the puck. Avalanche got it back. Brought in and by Taranto. Through the circle. Shot saved by Gustafson. Loose puck at the top of the crease. Still loose. Still loose. Duchesne's got it. Duchesne after it. Along the far wall. Punched the puck to the corner. 120 left to go. Pass along the end board. Center. Shot. Missed. And just wide on that chance by Downey. Hayden. Down the boards. Downey with the puck. Side of the net. Center. Shot. That's blocked. Shot by Hayden. That's blocked. Shot again by Hayden. That one goes wide. Well, the hands are all over him here in the final minute. Back to Hayden. Circle for Downey. Back to Hayden. Slammed it across for Johnson. Side of the net. Center. Reparento got tipped but kept in. Downey. Hayden with the puck. Behind the slot, Parento. Sent across for Johnson. Side of the net, Stanty. Back to Johnson. 40 seconds to go. Parento has to settle the puck down. Finds Johnson the circle. Side of the net for Stanty. Centered in front. Shot. That one deflected wide. Back around the boards for Downey. Cross ice pass for Duchesne. Along the board, 20 seconds to go. We got a whistle. Penalty. And a yep. penalty on Detroit. But you know. Mike, the Avalanche are up to 40 shots on goal in this game. There have been sequences where they have just peppered Gustafson. He has been terrific in this game. Here's a penalty right there. Gustafson is, if this holds up, is going to move to 3-0 for the Detroit Red Wings. Again, the Avalanche, if they have shown you one thing, it was in the preseason, it was there, and during the season. Now, they haven't trailed much, but this is not a club that gives up. They will just keep coming. Now, this game is probably not going to have the outcome that they wanted, but, you know, Mike, there certainly was no give up in that last minute. Well, they were really moving around. They had some chance, maybe the best one, Duchesne just yep. went a little bit high, right over the crossbar. But Peter, one of the concerns is, you're right, Landeskog, we haven't seen him in this yep, situation yep. here in the final couple of minutes when the Avalanche are pressing. He blocked the shot earlier in the period. We haven't seen him since. Yeah, and he, he, you know, a lot of, we saw Cody McLeod get hit in the knee area, but, and he was back the next game. Hopefully for Landeskog, it is just precautionary, and he will be back for the Avalanche to go on a quick two-game road trip. Off to Buffalo Saturday, and then uh, the Avalanche will have a game in Pittsburgh against the Penguins on Monday. O'Reilly trying to win this faceoff. He's got Duchesne right behind him. On the drop, it goes over to the wall. Duchesne plays it to Tangay. Flips the pass across for Parento. Cross ice for Duchesne. Ten seconds to go. Duchesne, side of the net, centered in front for McKinnon. Banded away by the wings. Well, the Avalanche are going to suffer their first loss of the season. Their arch rival, the Detroit Red Wings. With the goals for Franzen and Datsuk, each uh, with a two-goal performance tonight. And the Avs' uh, winning streak has come to an end. It ends at six. They go to six and one. Detroit now six and two in the season. But the Avalanche, one, did not give up. Two, they had a ton of shots against Gustafson, who had to make flurries of saves. But a couple of big, big goals in that third period for the Red Wings. We know that San Jose has also lost tonight. They lose in a shootout. They were the only other unbeaten team. All right, let's uh, talk about uh, tonight's scores, most than three stars of the game. Well, Michael, I, I, 
You picked him, and I think that's great. I mean, Atlanta Scott was certainly the Avalanche's biggest spark plug offensively in that second period on and on. And we'll hold in our, our breath, keeping fingers crossed that he's okay. Pavel Datsuk, two goals, eight shots. But Franzen, like, <laughs> it's, it's like a, a, a freak of nature coming into this building for him. And again, we met this talk about the fact no goals in seven games, two here tonight, including the game winner. All right, final score tonight, the Detroit Red Wings for the Colorado Avalanche 2. Join us again Saturday night, Avalanche trying to get their winning streak started again. They'll do it in Buffalo against the Sabres. Let's keep uh, the coverage going of the Avs. Let's go to the studio. It's time for the Auto Nation Locker Room Reports.